Good afternoon, and welcome to our celebration of the Holy Mass on this 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We extend a warm welcome to all who may be visiting today. If you are looking for a parish community, we would be happy to have you become part of our parish family. Please check to, to make sure that your cell phone is off as we are about to begin Holy Mass with hymn number 552, Praise God from whom all good blessings flow, song number 552. Would you please rise? Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, entering into the threshold of this holy place, these sacred mysteries in which the Lord nourishes us in word and sacrament, let us welcome him, acknowledging our sin and seeking pardon. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. 
God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, 
and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jarius came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him saying, my daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her so that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for 12 years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, you see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask who touched you? And he looked around to see who it was had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and in trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, don't be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, rose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know of this, and he said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. We have two of the most celebrated, authoritative examples of Jesus' physical healing powers during his earthly ministry. These confrontations of both sickness and death with the Son of God helped to define both his healing ministry and spiritual authority here on earth. They also demonstrated a profound philosophical change in the concept of salvation. Up until this time, 
Salvation for the Jewish people was, through achieved, was achieved through adherence to their religious laws that were laid out in the Old Testament, such as those in the book of Leviticus. Passages went on at length concerning standards of personal cleanliness, household purity, and symbolic rituals for staying in adherence to their laws. The distinction between what constituted clean and unclean regarding one's physical body, the types of food that one could eat, and even the physical objects that existed in one's house preoccupied Jewish religious leaders and their followers. The desire to maintain bodily and spiritual cleanliness was of paramount importance to a first century Jew. For a Jewish individual to touch an unclean person, such as a woman with hemorrhage, or of a dead human body that was outside of your immediate family would instantaneously make one unclean and unable to participate in both civic and religious activities. One would literally become an outcast from your family and friends, synagogue parishioners, and to the people you worked with, and to society as a whole. These were very serious matters that pious Jews understood all too well. These people adhered to their religious laws very faithfully in order to be in good standing within their community. If one was rendered unclean, in order to be reintroduced back into their society, one had to go through prolonged and protracted religious purification rituals. Jarius, who was a very high-ranking Jewish synagogue official, does something quite amazing for the position that he holds. He knows through his understanding of the Torah that his daughter's salvation will come about through her adherence to their ritualistic laws. But he goes outside of his Jewish faith and in total faith in Jesus, demonstrating total trust and total confidence, goes to Jesus to restore his daughter's life. He also knows that by asking Jesus to touch her dead body, Jesus will then become unclean, and he will become an untouchable, which is a grave event in Jewish society of the first century. The woman who was unclean for 12 years and the dead little girl both became clean by touching with their hand or by being touched by the hand of Jesus. In this interaction with our Lord, it is the hand that is the physical instrument of change. Once by his hand touching the little girl and the other by the woman's hand touching Jesus. In both instances, however, it was the faith of the woman with the hemorrhage and the faith of the father of the dead girl that was the divine conduit that allowed the physical and spiritual healing to take place. Most remarkably, Jesus did not become unclean or untouchable in either instance, but miraculously, he rendered cleanliness to those two individuals. In doing so, Jesus demonstrated that he was the new law in Israel, and that physical and spiritual salvation came about through faith in him and not adherence to laws of the Torah. In our four years of diaconal formation, my brother deacons and myself have come to understand that the most important function that we do as deacons is proclaiming God's word through the gospel at Holy Mass. It is truly a joyous and very deep spiritual experience. However, one of the most gratifying ministries that I perform is that of Eucharistic minister. Placing the body of Christ into the outstretched hand of the believer is a very humbling and awe-inspiring experience. It is through the individual hands of the communicant that they will receive the body of our Lord and it is these hands that tell a unique story of each individual. These outstretched hands 
Are the hands similar to those of the woman with the hemorrhage and of the little girl that touched Jesus? All of these hands God has given to us and are to be used to complete his work here on earth. These hands that come forward to receive the precious body of Christ are big, they're small, young, they're old, wrinkled, arthritic. Some have 10 fingers, some have less. Each pair of hands, however, conveys accounts of joy and also of very deep pain and every human emotion that's in between. These hands have experienced many delights, but also many sorrows on their earthly journey. They have held life at its first moments in infancy, and they have also held the hands of life at its end for those being called to come home to God. All of these hands have many common bonds. First and foremost is that through the Eucharist, our Lord Jesus Christ has touched them at every Mass. They've also held his precious blood in the chalice. They have been joined together in silent prayer and held together in community prayer. And they have joyously greeted their fellow Catholics in heartwarming embraces. But the most shared bond of all between all of our hands is that God has given us these hands to carry out his work in his fields to glorify his name. As a surgeon, I am amazed at the anatomic complexity of the hand from an engineering standpoint. It's a brilliant mechanism that can function in very forceful muscular movements and at the same time perform the most microscopic of movements. Hands can create wonderful masterpieces of art and they can also give love and compassion. As a newly minted grandparent, my wife and I have come to see the soothing and comforting effect of the hands of our daughter when our two-year-old grandson gets tired and fussy at the end of a day playing at our house. Our older, more experienced hands just do not have the special touch that he needs, despite our thinking so. But it is not so much what the hand can do on a human level that should interest us, but what God does through his priest's hands. For it is through their hands that we are able to receive Jesus Christ himself in the Eucharist and in the wine. With those hands being the conduit of changing the host and wine through transubstantiation into the body and blood of Jesus Christ at our holy mass. It is through their hands that we receive blessings. We receive absolution of our sins. We are anointed when we are ill. We experience the waters of our baptism and receive our final blessing at our internment. How privileged are we as a Catholic community to be able to witness the transformation of our seminarian, Joe Moynihan, from working with his hands as a practitioner in the medical healing arts, where he has tirelessly and compassionately cared for the most seriously physically ill patients to that of an ordained priest where he will work with his hands for the salvation of our souls for eternity. God has chosen those hands to do many great things, all for the glory of his name. God has also selected us with the individual gift of each and every one of our lives and has given us the faculties that we need in this, our temporal life, working through the use of our hands to help prepare our souls for eternal life. Like the woman with the hemorrhage and the little girl in Mark's gospel today, let us in total faith extend our hands to allow us to be touched by God. We unite our voices to profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. With confident faith, we bring ourselves, we bring our needs to the Lord. For the church's efforts to bring the healing touch of Jesus to those suffering physically, mentally, or spiritually, for the gift of hope to permeate these lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deep respect for the wonders of creation, especially evident in these summer days, May our steward stewardship and care for creation reflect our gratitude to the Creator. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For safety for all travelers and for summer leisure that will lead to spiritual as well as physical renewal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the Lord is calling to church vocations, for all in summer ministry internships, and for our seminarian Job in his ministry among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal rest in the peace of Christ, for Dorothy Vinciguerra, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all our departed loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all this as we seek to do everything, always, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing song number 460, You Are Mine, song number 460.
God who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. By rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so, with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down upon them your spirit like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 
At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us to not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously, and peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thanks, Thanks, nice of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy have mercy on us Lamb of God you take Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we've offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join us as we go forth this afternoon with song number 628. Lord, whose love and humble service, song number 628.